in five, four, three, two, one. Lab life. Wow. What is that? <laughs> what is that? I mean, isn't it beautiful? I think I know what it is, but I need you to explain exactly to me what the hell is going on. Like, this right here is the, the summer in a bottle on your table. This is who I am. This is where we are right now. This is the brand new um, collaboration that I've just done with Cruise Vodka from Manhattan Blossom. I like to focus on the cherry part of it. I like the cherry blossom element. Um, it's a beautiful vodka. It's made from vintage black infused with juniper and rose. We need a round of applause. <laughs> like it's my it's my baby. We need a round of applause. Wow. I'm Amazing. so happy that I can have this on the bottle. We're just um, on the table because we were just talking about how this is such a great platform that we can actually really promote the things that we're doing because even in this time it, People are trying to set up interviews, but like come through and talk about this thing that you've done, but just like don't mention any yeah, brand yeah, yeah. names. Yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah. I mean, well, that's weird. So I'm glad we're doing this. That time is done. I mean, for, for, for us, our main goal is to create a platform where people can come and be themselves mm -hmm. and show themselves to the world and show your products and sell anything that you're selling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're not trying to limit anybody. And like, that's the reason you're not going to see any banners running down our screen yeah. or you're not going to see any sponsorships on our show. We're just trying to create a platform where it. people can be themselves. We love but it. But this is amazing. This is amazing. I Thank mean, Thank you so much. Cruise Vodka started off with AKA, I guess? Yeah. AKA was their first one. AKA was the first one. So, and basically they started just with the vintage black with AKA only later on into the relationship did they develop the watermelon flavor specifically for AKA. This flavor was developed just for South Africa. Mm. So obviously Cruise is an international brand, but they do special things just for the South African market because they have such a great relationship with the market and the culture and like the whole culture that they've built around the brand is really, really amazing. So this is like a first for South Africa. Wow. Super excited about it. Who do we need to speak to? Who do we need to speak to? Your team is crazy. We always <laughs> see you pulling up with big moves. We always see you doing something crazy. Um, collaborations. You're never just an ambassador that's just there as a model or someone who's just holding the brand. Yeah. Your name is always part of the campaign. Your name is part of the product. You always have some sort of equity that we can see in the program that you're running. Who the yeah. fuck puts that together for you, man? I mean, let us know. Let us know. Don't be stingy with the connect. <laughs> I mean, Don't obviously, be stingy. I genuinely like to credit a lot of what I do to God because genuinely we have to have a lot of patience and we yeah. have to see things in another way before we see them in reality. So if it wasn't for God, I don't think we would be able to move the way that we do. But um, definitely, Sbura, he's the partner, you know. He's a great sounding board for me. We do pretty much everything together from when I first went independent, it was him. He was like, you're still trying to get a deal. Yeah. Open a yeah. label. Yeah. I said, Spuda, yeah. I, like, I don't even have like a project. How yeah. am I going to open a label? He said, it's not about now. It's about where are you trying to be in like 10 years, in five years, even in a year from now, you know, because things happen really quickly. Things move really crazy. So, um, yeah, Spuda is the guy. And I, I'm not shy with that. I share Spuda with a lot of people. He does things for a lot of other people. Yeah. People think he's my guy, but he does things for you. Yeah, he yeah, does yeah. things for, like, Costa Teach and, yeah, yeah. like, anybody. Like, if, if, if you and Spuda can well, break we, bread. There's certain ways that we can't share Spuda. Oh. It's certain, there's, so I think I think you're very happy Come with on. that. We need to give him a round of applause. Come on. If he wasn't <laughs> holding it down in the <laughs> other section, you were gonna be mad jealous. I'm but you're dead. good. I I'm know dead. you're good. How is that though? How does that? Because I also work with my partner. Uh, you know, when you grow up, that's the words you use. You don't say you don't say girlfriend or fiance. Right. You say partner uh -huh. when when you really grow life up and you partner. and you figure out life. You, say, you become partners. How is that working with your partner? Um. It's like breathing, honestly. Mm. It's really such a normal thing for mm. me to do. Um, and I think people have kind of created a weirdness around working with your partner and business and pleasure. And they've just like given it a lot of these weird connotations. But I think me and Spuda are prime examples of how when your visions are aligned, mm. Mm. like it's a really, really beautiful thing. Yeah. And... um. We, 
we do it so well. Yeah. And I feel like our work has also just allowed us to fall in love with each other as people yeah. because the passion that we have for the work that we do always just like keeps us so into each other because he's always just punished by the things that I do and I'm always so punished by the things that he does. Yeah. So um that's love. I, I mean love that's it. love. Yeah. That's love. I, I mean like people always used to say to me, don't work with your family. Yeah. Don't include them in the family. And then they always bring up the examples. They'll tell you about Ike and Tina Turner. They'll tell you about Michael Jackson's dad. For sure. They'll say like, yo, you can't work with family. But I think, you know, we are proof that you can work with family. Totally. And you can live in one household and, and talk shop. And, Completely. And, and, and talk love and talk bump and grind and uh -huh. talk having fun and talk friends. Uh -huh. You can put that all in, 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 in one basket and make it happen. You For know? sure. Tell me something. Yeah. You, you can't even take your eyes off this. No, I can't take my <laughs> I can't take my eyes off because I don't know if it's for you. I don't know if it's for you or if it's for me. Do no, I get to keep it? This is yours. I see you changed my background. Mm -hmm. I had the purple background. We changed the background specifically for for this. Yeah. But wait, you're gonna leave the background. I will leave the can, background. Can you leave us some of this cruise? We gotta let some of our our guests taste the cruise. You are Manhattan blossom. The only dude, Spuda doesn't even have the cruise blossom bubble. <laughs> Thank so you. I'm gonna take this it. This is for you. I'm gonna keep it that side. I'm gonna keep it that side. Yeah, I'm gonna just keep, hold I'm, it there. I'm gonna keep it that side just for the aesthetic. Yeah. And I got the scarf mm -hmm. too. And you got the t-shirt. You got. I got you. Like I got you. Well, and I saw the promotion that you were doing. You're actually getting all your friends involved. Yeah. In the run, and that's always been a common theme. Every time you do something, I'm always gonna see Zinke. I'm always going to see Pearl Tusi. Yeah. Uh, especially those two. I'm sure there's more, but I always see Zintle and Pearl. Yeah. This this girl man's that you guys have going on is fucking crazy. It's off the hook and y'all support each other nuts. Yeah. Is that something that you 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 guys built over a long time or, we, or were you, did you make a decision that, yo, we need to support each other as women in the game. Let's support each other with everything that we do and, you know, and yeah. then it is what we see now. I mean, I've always been about that. Like, I've always, always been about that from the very beginning of my career. Um, I, I think it started off with Vanessa. Mm. And Vanessa, she worked at MTV. Yeah. And as soon as I got the job, she, like, reached out to me. She was like, sis, like, this mm. is the game. Let mm. me put you on. And she was connected to a whole different network on the African continent. And she genuinely, like just like put me on and it's just like it's really great when you can meet the opportunities that your friends give you mm. and you like make the most of them um so i've i understood that from there and then i mean me and lutz have also very, been tied from the very beginning she and i did the live presenter search together she won that i was actually like oh top yeah. two with oh her yeah. that, that's a, that's how I that was that was mtv no, no, that was no. Live Amp. So I did that before. I did the that Live, live Presenter Amp. Search. Yes, before MTV. You won MTV. I won the MTV Base VJ Search. Okay. Who came? Oh, oh, I'm thinking of the number two of MTV. Yeah. So but I think, the number, uh, yeah, the there was Nomzamo the, and there was Naledi. We were in the top three of the MTV Base VJ Search. So you did the first one, the uh -huh. Live Amp one. It didn't work out. Yeah, but that was like one of a lot of auditions that I did. So it wasn't, it was a bit of a bummer, like, damn. I didn't win. But I was like so used to not getting things because I'd gone to so many auditions. What were you auditioning for at that time? Everything. Everything. Anything. Do you need a person that can talk? Like, I'm there. Every single audition. I was like, even at Namuzi the SABC, one of those Namuzi, Namuzi was one of those persistent. I'm telling persistent you. Persistent people that show up at your door knocking. Dude. Hey, cotton fest, Vulani, <laughs> love, Dingan, love. I'm coming through. Do you need a host? I'm there. I was that person. Before you even ask, are you, you're one of those guys. Even how I actually started hosting, um, the guy that I was dating at the time in Benoni, he used to like throw these shows, Ben City Rise. Mm. And I was just like, how, oh, babe? I mean, it is what it is. And it was weird because I broke up with him before the show. But that's why I had to kill the show. Like, <laughs> I had to kill the show. She was doing the Michael Jordan <laughs> The Mike and Jordan create a problem, <laughs> create a problem to make me succeed through yeah, this. Yeah, so but I'm always, like, I've always just been that person. And I think to this day, I'm just that person. Like, if you, like, I show up, that's my thing. Mm. And I, I, I have the same thing with my friends and we have it for each other. Like, a big word for us is intentional. Mm. Because a lot of the time we find ourselves saying, oh, I did that, I, I, it wasn't intentional. I'm sorry, that was unintentional. This is unintentional or whatever. Like, mm. but when you, when you have intention, 
things happen in a way bigger way. Like the impact that you can make is way bigger. So um, I'm, I've always been very, very intentional with every single thing that I do. And yeah, whether it's my friendship, whether it's the hustle, I've always been that person. You gotta want it. It's not gonna happen by mistake. Oh no! You gotta, you gotta, you gotta plan for it and work and work towards it. But yeah. that's dope because actually, you named Loot Love and you named uh, Vanessa. I don't remember you having a bad relationship with anybody. I don't remember you having any back and forths or or breakups. You know, we've been through a lot of breakups. Like <laughs> <laughs> we break up a lot and we make up a lot too. Yeah. But but I've never heard of you having like a, a friend that's not a friend anymore. Mm -hmm. All your friends are still close with you and all your friends are still tight with you, especially in the industry. And people think, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, people think females in the industry are don't actually like trying to stab other. each other in the back yeah. and are trying to screw each other over for jobs. But yeah. it doesn't seem that, like that with you guys. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm very cognizant. Like, I do a lot of stock taking on my energy. Mm. I try not to lend my energy to things that don't serve me well mm -hmm. like if if it's gonna end in me like rolling my eyes me feeling like <laughs> me feeling like i went a fog fog or whatever like i'm not gonna do it like you don't deserve it and it's it's different now I, i'm finding that the older i get the more keen i'm getting to just actually be able to tell a person goods yes you know, try mm -hmm. but for the longest time i've always just been about you will never know that you move me on that level. Yeah. Like, yeah. never. But if it makes for a great rap song, I might just have to, like, tap into that energy a little bit. I need to learn from you. I need to read some <laughs> of your book. I need to read some of your book. I'm too impulsive, man. I'm too, like, like, I can do the thing of trying to zen down and trying to be calm, you know, yeah. when I'm in a certain space. But I, my, 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 my impulses are fucking crazy. I yeah. think that's what makes me the person that I am, like, I always I always act on an emotion real quick, but I, I've I've never been able to just like pull myself completely and just be still without ch having to react. I'm always reacting to some shit. Yeah, I mean, I'm like I say, I mean, I'm now getting to a place where if you catch me on that day, I'm I'm gonna let you know. <laughs> but but for the easy. most part, I genuinely just I just will never like it. it the thing is, ultimately, even to hate somebody is still to care about them in a way and to give them energy in some kind of a way. And, like, I don't like you. I'm not giving you anything, nothing, not a thing. But, like, like I say, I have my days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got your days, days where you need Jesus. Yeah. And or I just need a dope beat, honestly. Shit. <laughs> so from going to auditions every day and knocking doors down and trying to get into you know the tv the tv stations and the tv shows how did it come about where you say okay i'm in now people know me my career is going really well as a presenter and a host what makes you want to jump off the cliff and do music um because that's a fucking cliff yeah that's a, that's that that is a difficult that is a difficult thing to do that is a difficult thing to do at least in my experience yeah. It was, it was hard. It was hard See, trying I'm, to decide to, to actually go I'm impulsive on things like that. It's like those are the things that I lend my energy to. Like if I'm going to react to something quickly and say, hey, now let's activate this thing. Let's go. Those are the things I throw myself into. And um, I really like, not really like because I don't. It's actually quite difficult and it gets so stressful constantly throwing yourself into something new and having to like learn about it and master it. But I have a good understanding of the fact that God uses unqualified people to do specialized tasks all the time. So anytime I get an opportunity where it's like, mm -mm, my sister, this one is not for you. Yeah, this yeah. one is bigger yeah. than you. Maybe you shouldn't do this one. I'm like, that's the one. That's, that's but, the one I'm going to go with. But the music, you were like, I can handle this. I the music handle this. just, when, when the opportunity came, it was just like, yeah, what time? How did it come about? Tell me, like, how did it actually come about? Because the first time we actually saw you, I think, was Cash Time. Yes. Must have been Cash Time. Yeah. How did that come so about? So I'd been working at MTV for about two and a half years, maybe like three years. And the African music scene was just, like, exploding. I don't know, maybe it, if it was just our exposure to the scene. 
but it was just like really taking off yeah. and as a hip hop as well and I was like doing everything in the game but rapping like I was out there hosting performing like I was rapping the songs and I was doing all these amazing collaborations with these brands I knew all the people I was like writing with DJ Speedster and DJ Capital at the time and with Makosini Full Play Media you know we're like throwing events and it just seemed like you know, like the next natural step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just seemed like the best way to like express myself and be able to like take the message further. Because I think from the very beginning of my career, I've always established myself as like that person that you can trust, that go to that authority. Yeah, Maybe it yeah. comes from like working at MTV and having that music authority background. But I've always just wanted to be like a voice for what's happening in the space that I am in. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, when you're a presenter, you have to just represent the brand and yeah. represent the channel. And yeah. it is just like fucking boring. And it's just side. like... There's another side I can I can take it. Yeah, a bit like and there's some shit that I'm trying to say. There's some stuff that I'm trying to do. So like music really seemed like a good thing. And at the time, like I didn't really feel like there was that female rapper who was like honestly like owning it and like representing for the scene and like yeah. doing it the way and just like you know, doing it in a way that Umba was so it so could be like, Oh, yeah, I get that's it. That's me. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So I just I, I just felt like there was a societal need that yeah. needed to be filled. And this kind of movement was also blowing up at that time. On fire. So what what happened was I was obviously working at MTV and VG was uh, a compiler at MTV. He was like okay. a scheduler, actually. He was like the guy who put the music videos on the channel. Like For anybody, this is background on, on DJ Vigilante. He's not just the guy from Popcast. No moves is breaking down what the fuck he's actually done. <laughs> All right? For anybody who thought he doesn't do shit, yeah. the moves is breaking it down now. Like, VG was very, like, he had a crazy role that MTV, he tried to leave so many times. And they're like, VG, no. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, VG, you can't go. Um, so he did that. And then he just was like, yo, Moos, have you ever thought about being an artist? And I was like, I mean, once I spoke about it to Tira, but like, no, not really. Why? He's like, no, because, you know, I'm at cash time and I think you'd be like a dope female. Yeah, but just to well, so VG complete put the, whole, the VG, squad. VG was putting it together. You know, I don't know if he, it was actually his idea or somebody sent him or whatever, but I mean, I, I, I'll give him the credit. VG took me to the crib. Mm. He did. Mm. So um, he was like, you know, you should do it. And Mel, who works at Spotify now, she was also there at the office. Oh, yeah. um, oh, she yeah. worked at MTV oh, as yeah. well. Oh, yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah, Mel. And Mel was like, yeah, Mel, you should do it. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm be a rapper. This is going to be great. Let's do it. I didn't really think twice about it, but I was like, okay, let's do it. And it was like, I remember it was Durban July coming up. And then Sabuda invited me to a party where they were at. It was a head honcho party, Durban July. It was a Friday night before the Durban July head honcho party. Cash time is headlining. It's Kidex. It's KO. It's my easy does it. It's mugs. You're still selling it. Dude. L listen to the way she's telling the story. No, she's let like, me tell you. It's my KO. <laughs> it's my easy does it. No. I'm telling you. I, I was punished. I wouldn't lie, I was punished. So we're at this party, it's dope, it's cool. Come on, like, we're inside, you know? And also me and Spudo are now, we're just, like, starting to get to know each other. So <laughs> he's got me nice, you know? He's making sure that I'm sorted out at the Ms. party. I don't, I don't know whether to take, like, this. <laughs> the way you're selling this shit to me. Oh, that was just, like, it was a really also great Spudo, night. Also, Spudo is just, <laughs> we just, uh, I... So yeah, okay. We gotta get we gotta get Muzi on some carnivore <laughs> shit real quick. We gotta get Muzi to sell some carnivore shit. Tell the story. So then, yeah. So then these guys arrive at the party, you know, because Vijay was like, "Yeah, come to the party, whatever." I was like, "Okay, I'll come." I'm not even lying to you. They came in slow motion, like when they <laughs> walked in, they just said, "Like I was just <laughs> punished." Like, and this was before everything took. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was. Yeah. It was just yeah. 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 Let me tell you, that was the Friday. I feel you. The Monday, I landed in Joburg. Monday night, I was at Kale's house. <laughs> we were having the meeting. Like, okay, guys, so 
I'm in. She Let's sent a, do it. She, she sent a message saying, I also want to walk in slow motion. Like, Let's do this shit. Guys, and I just switched up everything. Like, I switched up my whole swag. I was like, I'm, I'm really investing myself into, like, becoming this thing. It was difficult, but I... It was like, you know, a lot of people like, oh, wasn't it so hard? Do you see how I was seeing it? Mm. I was like, yo, I'm in touch. Like, hey, but it was crazy. <laughs> and that's the thing about you. I think every time you decide to go into a project or to do something, you give your all. Mm-hmm. You give your all. And nobody can take anything away from you. Yeah. Um, I was pissed, man. Like uh, when, um, when the Drive Alive campaign thing happened. I was so pissed, like, not to bring it up all the time, but I was really pissed. That I, and I think I've spoken to you and Spud about it. I was pissed because I got so upset that people couldn't see how fucking hard this girl works, you know? Because I see the behind the scenes. I see when you do a campaign. For that campaign to have been that effective, it meant you gave your all yeah. for it to, to, to get to that level, to touch a nerve for some people. Mm-hmm. But... You've always given your all for everything that you do. If you do a collaboration like with the cruise thing, we didn't even fucking know they were about to do something. And yeah. you popped up and now every the whole country knows that Cruise has got Manhattan Blossom and Muzi's the the partner for that. You know. You did the collaboration with uh, YDE. Mm. You with know Silver Lux, yeah. With, 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 uh, sold it at YDE. You mm-hmm. sold it at YDE. Out. You know what I'm saying? You did the, the Steve Madden stuff. I don't know if you're still doing Steve Madden. No. You're not doing Steve Madden anymore? I mean, we, we upgraded from Steve Madden to the YDE thing. Oh, that was the upgrade. That was the upgrade. Like, Silver Lux had the vision that Steve Madden didn't. Oh, so they took it another level. So they were like, we get it. We're going to do this with you. You know, you go into presenting. You're doing it on a high level. You go into music. You do it on a high level. You know, you're not just, you know, rocking verses and then not shooting videos or not dropping albums. You probably got more, she probably got more tapes than I do. <laughs> you, probably I got, might just, you probably got more albums than I do. I, I've got two projects. So it's like, I was so upset, man, that people can't see how much this girl works from just trying to stay fly. You know, just staying fly is hard enough. Just staying dope for the gram. Talk or, about it. That's hard enough. Talk about but it. But for you to be able to go do campaigns that are going to resonate with the country, it's that, you know that that's really something. That's that's another level of work rate that you know that people don't understand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you ever feel like people look at you like, yo, there's this fucking kid. Not to jump too many topics. Have you seen this kid called Slick Talk on YouTube? Mm-mm. Have you seen this kid called? You need to actually check out that kid. He's like I don't know. He's a YouTube hater. Check out YouTube hater. He's a YouTube hater, but I think I don't know if it's part of an act, but he's funny as fuck and he just shits on everyone. He shits on all of us. He shits on everyone who's industry. He shits on us all, right? But Slick Talk always uses this thing like, you've had favors. You've had favors. You're only in the game because you've had favors. That's what he always says to everybody. Do you ever feel like people look at you and say, ah, Muzi's got the favors just because they saw you on TV for the first time? They think, oh, you're only there because you're getting favors. That's, that's Slick Talk's words, by the way. <laughs> favors. Um, do, you ever, do, do, do you ever hear that chatter or do you, is that something that's even in your world? Here and there, people, I, I hear it in situations like this. Where people ask me, like, so how does it feel for you to, like... Yeah, because I don't like it. Because, yeah. like, when, 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 when I hear it... Yeah. When I look through Twitter and, you know, and something pops up and I... Ex- especially, and it's not, like, all the time. It was especially when that was happening. Mm-hmm. It was almost like people were trying to say, you haven't done shit. I'm like, oh, this, let me tell this fucking you, girl has done more shit than you guys have ever dreamed of. These people could not even believe that. Like, it was four days. I, you know... When you just like can't even go on Twitter. And that's the thing. That's the power of it. That's the beauty of it. And that's why I didn't allow that experience to break me. Because I didn't read any of the tweets. Mm. I just put down the phone. So it didn't get to me because I was so focused on my message. And I knew what it is that we were trying to do. I knew what it is that we were trying to achieve. And what they didn't realize is that in their anger and in their stir and in their whatever it's like that's what we we, this was what was gonna happen and i think people don't realize a lot of the time that they're just feeding into something that it it doesn't affect anything at all it's just like we knew that that was gonna happen that was the emotion like that's the thing about what we were trying to do and 
you know like why it was personal for me especially that campaign is like everybody has been affected by drinking and driving like or a car accident everyone whether it's your friend you have an uncle whether it's whoever like everybody individually they've experienced it in their life but they still do the same shit every day like they still going to be on their phones and drive they still going to drink and drive they still going to do the wrong thing every single day and there has to be like a a like a cosmic like a like you know when you shake the table yeah. and everybody feels it but the only way that sadly that you can really break it into people's minds is like helping them feel a common pain that they can all relate to together and all come together and realize good you know what we actually need to be doing better and i think it happens in weird ways in other spaces but because it was me and because it was the impact that we had or whatever it was really really big but we knew that would happen and we wanted it to happen because people were just not taking the shit seriously and they still not to this day I mean, and that's the thing people get mad when you like tell them the truth i think that's why it actually hurt a lot of people it's like don't tell me like don't put a mirror in my face mm. i know what i look like mm. don't mm. You, you don't come and tell me what i look like yeah 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 like people don't like that and i, I think also too for i mean in that situation you know when somebody dies from a car accident um, um i've had two or maybe even three yeah i've had three of of my best friends let alone family members but my best friends um that passed away in in car accidents um and it was always drinking driving drinking driving was the case uh, but when somebody dies in an accident and they were drinking and driving you never get to slap them and say what the fuck were you thinking you never get to tweet when someone passes away mm-hmm. uh you know rest in peace but what the fuck were you doing you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying that you you people never get to actually mm-hmm. convey that emotion that they feel you know they never get to tell the world like well guys that's what happens you know and you're not allowed to either and for you when they discover that it was like a, a, a campaign i think it was people getting out that emotion of fuck you yes. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing really how was. how could you do this you know yeah, what i'm saying it, really it was the was. first time that they could bring it back and the you person could have was still at least there. put a warning at the beginning of the video so you know that what i'm saying you. you know what i'm saying and yeah. that, that was powerful man that was i mean f- that was probably one of the most memorable campaigns yeah and you took a lot of heat for it but i took a lot i gotta of give heat. you I, I gotta give you props even though it's years later Thank i you. gotta give you props for that one because and it was a life-changing experience i felt it i felt it, I felt it, it was I felt a life-changing experience you have absolutely no i like like people don't know what it's like to die like i actually kind of felt that in that on that day like cuz i felt the prayers and i remember being in church and being called to the front and like they were praying for me and it felt that same way on that night when the whole thing was in play like i actually could physically feel the prayers like people were literally just praying for me to be okay just praying for me to be well it was a really really hectic time and it was my birthday yesterday and i kind of felt the same way like people were giving me the same emotions yeah, like yeah, hey yeah. Moose, i love you so much the the spirit the energy like a lot of people just speak about how you made them feel very few people told me like oh that music video that you did and oh my gosh your outfits or whatever like everybody was just like it's a, like a, the, it's the way you made us feel mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like we just need you to get better and it's so crazy like a lot of people will text you like you'll have been a car accident <laughs> people are like trying yeah. to text you yeah. which is a weird thing yeah. but um i i got a brand new appreciation for life and for the voice that i have and the voice that i bring to things that's why every interaction i'm like you can't play me i died for a brand yeah, <laughs> like yeah. there's no way you're going to try mickey mouse me cuz i i will take it all the way if yeah. i really really believe in it you know yeah are you religious are you a religious person or oh my gosh i won't preach for you right now <laughs> <laughs> please don't <laughs> <laughs> not right now i'm a pray for you actually people people already complaining and like complaining and and and, and sending me messages say yo the next podcast you do you better not fucking cry <laughs> yeah oh that <laughs> one was hectic you're though, getting too hey? deep i'm like yo man the emotions is the emotions you yeah. know what i'm saying so please don't pray for me because i might just start breaking down right, <laughs> now, right in front of you but like this religion is something that uh, that uh, 
that's with you all the time? Yeah. I'm not like your, like that conventional Christian mm-hmm. that like everybody thinks of when they think about like a Christian. You don't wear stockings. I mean, if they Gucci, I'm like. No, like <laughs> you don't wear the black ones. <laughs> no. You know, you know, you know the black ones that uh, that you can't see nothing. Yeah, yeah, the black, no. The dark, what the dark so, every day. Uh, uh-uh, no. What's so crazy is that I grew up in an Anglican church, and like my sister and my mom and my gran and everyone, they were all in the groups, like altar guild, uh, Saint Mary's and stuff. Mm. But for some reason, like I just skipped it. Like mm. I don't know why my gran didn't force me to be in it like everybody else had to do it but yeah. i didn't have to do it and i think that kind of just set me on my own path of like finding god in my own cool practical way mm. because i think people try to make religion and god and everything logical and they wanted to make sense and tick certain boxes and whatever and like life doesn't even do that so Mm. why the hell would god do that Mm. so i've got like a really dope cool relationship with god that i think i try to make it seem like it's just something that i do at home when i'm praying Mm. or on a sunday morning but the deeper you get into that relationship and the further along you get on that walk the more you realize that like there's absolutely nothing that exists without God. Mm. And I actually realized that everything that I do, like m- my work is my ministry. And that's how you started. That's how you started this. You even said that this is because of God. This exactly. is God right here. Yeah. God like, like this is literally my ministry. There's like so many people who are watching me who just could not be bothered to wake up on a Sunday morning and to go and hear what the pastor has to say. Mm. But, um, if they can look at me and be like, ah, 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 even if it's coming from a place of like, not you, my sister, yeah. there must be God if it's you, that's yeah. fine. I don't yeah. mind. Yeah. I don't mind being that person. Yeah. It's not It's not easy. Sometimes it would be great to just be like that person who's just always like out there shining in the glory. Yeah. Yeah. But it's yeah. like, ultimately, I know that my life mission is to bring glory to God. And yeah. that's like my own dope cool relationship that i have with him what type of household did you grow up in like uh what was your growing up like i grew up in like a really dope like full 90s land of mandela all the possibilities in the world Mm. you know my mom was a teacher you were born in 92 92 Mm -hmm. making me feel old (laughs) and i feel old i'm 28 like when i tell people 87 they're like 87. My they can't sister even think was about born it. in 87. Yeah. So I have an older sister um, who's like my girl. Benjamin Poncho, shout out to the sister. And then my mom is a teacher, Elokshini. My dad is that like small town guy, but killing it on the corporate, you know, just see my banner doing his thing you know he was a executive skills development advisor for the chamber of minds mm. you know very serious guy but mm. like just genuinely parents who just worked hard to make sure their kids had what they needed and i grew up in a small town so i always say i never had friends i only had brothers and sisters and cousins mm. who to this day like oh if you don't make sure that your things are aligned with them It's going to be a little bit awkward for you, you know? So I had that perfect, like, small town, just I I could play and I could do my thing. I also went to a private school. Mm. I spent a lot of time in the hood. Yes, in Benoni. And now Joburg, do you consider Joburg as your home? Since you've been here, you've been working here for a while, do you consider this your new home or your new playground? Definitely. Joburg is my home. Um, I've been here since 2011. Mm -hmm. So that's a while. I've like got a network of people out here. I've got my friends here, like sport is here. Mm. You know? I was thinking about leaving. I was thinking about leaving Joburg. And going but away. I don't know. I want I wanted I to go back about home. Cape like, Town I miss sometimes, Durban, man. but no. I miss Durban. Oh Cape Town. I love Cape Town. Mm. But Cape Town gets you in trouble. I ain't trying to be in Cape Town too much. Mm, Cape I Town love Cape Town. I recorded much. my album in Cape Town and it changed my life because I've got friends there. And they just changed my life. So I'm like, oh, Cape I'm trying Town. to be there all the I time. think I, I, I know your friends. I know, yeah. I know your friends in Cape Town. Yeah. I, I think so. Same crew, right? Yeah. You've never lost a friend. <laughs> You've never lost a friend. But like, I, I was thinking like, it could be interesting. I mean, especially now with lockdown and everything that's happened with the industry sort of shifting a little bit or trying to recreate itself. 
I think people can live wherever they want and still, you know, and still do their work and still get their work done. Or do you mm. think it's still like stay in Joburg? Do you think you There's could? There's something you, about Joburg, man. If you There's went, something about this city that, like, even now in the lockdown, um, you know, my dad was just like, my, oh, my baby, if you want to come home, you know, that. Yeah, people went home. A lot of people went home. Which is okay. And I was actually just so blessed. And I said, Dad, I'm so grateful that that's an option. Like, I'm so grateful that that's an option. That you can. But I'm not gonna make it. Like, If you went home, would you take Buddha? Joe you'd have to take Buddha home with you also. You'd both, you'd both be in the house. No, my dad would never allow <laughs> that. <laughs> Yo, we had no respect. My dad would never allow that. I had no respect. See, I gotta apologize to my mom. I mean, if, if my dad was alive, he, he might have fucked me up. But my mom, I had no respect. I had girlfriends coming in the house. I had girlfriends cooking in the kitchen. Uh, I, I had them changing changing the TV station, changing the DSTV. I, yeah. I, I mean, Spuda, like, everybody I knows him. I controlled the crib. No, like, everybody knows Spuda. He's that guy. My little cousins love Spuda. Everybody loves Spuda. Even if it's, like, a family thing, my mom is, like, giving me the plate, like, I got Spuda and I'm just just suffering like <laughs> wasn't he gonna get Uber Eats or something but okay cool like my family, family. loves him but ultimately like you know mm. culture yeah that'd be crazy like I, I think like if I went back to stay with my mom Dukes now I, yeah, 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 yeah. I, don't, uh -uh. Know. I don't know how it'll be when my mom Dukes comes to visit me I get stressed out even just <laughs> even if she visits for like two hours like fuck I can't walk around in my underwear yeah like I like doing that type of shit you know what I'm saying I like like you know what I'm saying yeah. I, like, I like just walking around being reckless you know yeah. what I'm saying in the house I don't want to be like you know no. I, I'm walking around squeezing squeezing my wife's butts you know what I'm saying that I'm, is Buddha that's who I am I, I can't like I can't live in the oh house oh my with, gosh that's where you gotta Buddha. be controlled you know what I'm saying that's Buddha <laughs> Then baby They're literally the only time he doesn't omelets. do that like is like if we in a meeting or something like <laughs> but otherwise he's serving me that's my girl <laughs> that's the one i squeezed bianca's nipples today just before i came here i stop. squeezed the nipples stop stop, <laughs> she, stop. she was like fuck off <laughs> she's like fuck because she was changing she's doing it stop and I, and I did it i gave I'm her the titty, i gave her the titty nice, please. Stop. please stop please i'm asking you so yo she gets so mad at me because i'm that immature one i'm that one who's going around smacking yes. people with towels you know no, what i'm saying oh but it's just serving me nice like uh. I, yeah, you serve the nice one serve mm. the nice one but sometimes i gotta like you know what i'm saying i, don't know. I, don't I gotta think give that you a wet willy no <laughs> No. Yo, pardon the pun. Pardon the pun. If you don't know the wet willy, the wet willy is the <laughs> one where you take the, the finger and you put it in the ear. That's the wet willy. Pardon the pun. Excuse me. I'm that silly one, so I, 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 we're not going back home. Uh -uh. Lockdown will not send us back home. Fuck that. In the that. name of Jesus, amen. Fuck that. Fuck that. We got we to gotta pray more. We got to mm -hmm. put more energy into whatever we're doing because it's, it's a hard time. Artists have had a difficult time. Dude. This is this is the... I'm, I'm not... Uh, 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 yeah, uh, people, you know, people think it's another way when I say this, but I, like I was already getting into a zone where I didn't want to do as many shows, so lockdown almost came at a time where I was asking for the slowdown. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, 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 so I was a little bit grateful yeah. that everything could slow down and I didn't have to be on road to, so all the time. Yeah, and I was, I, I was happy about that. But if I wasn't in that zone, it was like fuck. What the fuck is going on? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying like. What the fuck are we gonna How do? How many now? times did you cry during lockdown? Yeah, I didn't really cry that much, like because I had money heist. I had uh, I had a Sadguru. You know Sadguru. Sadguru, you must check out Sadguru on YouTube. He's the one. Is like a he's like a you know those Hindi cats that give you the life lessons. The 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 the, the yoga guys, the yoga cats with the long beards, okay. and they tell you what life's about. Uh -huh. I was listening to that, listening to that, and I, I was on the Netflix. We were on the Monopoly. We played Monopoly like three times. Pictionary. And playing Monopoly three times is a lot. If you, your attention is like me. Playing Monopoly three times. Monopoly is fucking boring. <laughs> I don't know who invented that shit. I used it's to love It's only dope when Monopoly. you're winning. If you're losing in Monopoly, you just want to throw. I haven't played Monopoly in years. You don't want to lose. It, it, listen, now maybe you've got that zen about you, but you don't want to play Monopoly and get your ass kicked. By Yo, your, by your I children. was so strategic. I needed nah. to own the same streets every time. That's like, what was going on. Oh yeah. So we were playing games and 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 we were on that vibe. So we didn't really cry, but I I, I did I mean, cry I had, when I, I got I, news, like when I got news of people passing away or oh, yeah. someone who's been affected or someone who can't pay their rent or whatever. Uh -huh. That's when it, it 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 that's those are the moments where it, it really hit me. 
of like, fuck, we actually have so much more work to do mm -hmm. in order to make sure not just we're all right, but the people around us got to be all right. That's what this, this, this lockdown shit was like. Fuck, we're actually not just working for ourselves. We're working to make sure that all our stuff is sorted, you know. And we had to send people home from the barbershop. That was the saddest part, but at least we managed to hold them down, you know. And um, You see, that would have made me cry. Yeah, that, that like, <laughs> I, you know, I, I think I would have cried if I had to tell them that, you know, it's over. Yeah. If, I, if I had to tell them that it's over, that would have been deep for me. But I, it's, it's in some weird way, you know, the president opened up for the barbershops real quick. Barbershops, I think, opened up after 50, 40 days. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, that was a good move. And we didn't have any cases at the, sh at the store. We, had, we have had no infections, nothing like that. So we've done pretty well. But, like, just thinking about how we're going to do these shows, I don't even know how this Cotton Fest thing is going to happen. That's the, that's the, that's the part that, 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 that might make me cry. If we're not able to do Cotton Fest the way that we've been doing it, that might make me cry. That really might make me cry. I mean, it might just also just you know, open up and set you up for a whole new thing and do it in a way and just, like, bring you, like, make it perfect for you. For instance, I, I, when I went to Tepi when we did the drop, she was telling me that, like, oh, I'm I'm, I'm doing Fashion Week with my closet. You guys did the show, yeah. Yeah, she was my partner. I actually. said, what? You're doing New York Fashion Week? Yeah. That's dope. And it's like, that might not have been something that would have happened if it wasn't for the way things had happened. Mm -hmm. So I think it's definitely a lesson for us to be, and me and her had this conversation, let's be specific about our, our prayers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And let's tell God exactly what we want, how we want it. And it's, it's even a church, like they pray for, like a dead, if you want property, mm -hmm. pray for dead free property. Mm -hmm. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. if you want a, a car, Pray that the engine functions. Pray that no harm will come against the car. So, like, things always happen the way they're supposed to happen in that time, even in the the midst of the craziest things. And, like, God will make sure that it works out for you in your way. Like, okay, we can't go to church, but we can go to the barber shop and we can go. But for you, because it works for you, you're my child. Mm. You need this to work for you. Mm. I will, like, open doors. I will build a door. People still trying to open doors. Like, God will build a door and make sure that you get through. We're going to make it work. So, like, it'll, it might just work out the way it's supposed to. And for you, I mean, you, 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 you came right back out with this. Um, right out of lockdown. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, 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 I signed and an alcohol deal during an alcohol ban. <sighs> What kind of a God do you serve? Woo! Talk to them. Talk to them. The drought is over. <laughs> the drought is over. Oh, but I can't cancel. Cancel that song. Cancel that song. Sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that was bad. My bad. <laughs> so Yo, funny. My kids. No, you know I'm laughing because my kids like I'll be chilling in the house. And my kids will be singing, I believe I can fly. I'm like, what the fuck, man? What are we going to do about this shit mm. right here? Right? Mm. It's crazy. Music is like a way of like going to places and lasting forever, regardless of what the fuck is going on. Mm. Music has a way of lasting forever. Mm. And like my kid, I don't know where he, he <laughs> picked up that song. It might have been from Space Jam or it was probably from Space Jam. It was probably from Michael Jordan videos because he's always watching Michael Jordan videos. And that's like the theme song for Michael Jordan, right? So it made me realize, damn, you actually can never control where music goes and how it goes. You can try, but people can never tell you, Muzi, this song of yours, mm -mm, it's not going to go to this place. Yeah. No label can sit you down and say, nah, we're not going to push this song. Yeah. If the song is dope, it's going to move to where you, where you want it to move. As long as you keep creating. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? And a lot of artists don't look at that. Like A lot of artists listen to people telling them, ah, oh, this song is not going to work. Ah, oh, this song on this album, I'm not feeling it. I maybe move this track as your fourth single, your first single. It's it's very important. It's very important. It's very yeah. important to recognize that music moves in spaces that we just cannot understand. My children were singing fucking uh, um, Little Uzi Vert, and my kids were singing Little Uzi Vert. I'm like, where did you get yeah. Little? 
Where did you get I saw little you Uzi saying from? Mikey likes like Juice World. Juice World. And, 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 and that's the thing. I was like, where, do you, where are you <laughs> getting this from? Because he's not on TikTok. He's not on Instagram. He's not a, you know, I was thinking like, where does he get all this music from? He was singing Gangster's Paradise the other day. Imagine. Imagine Mikey singing Gangster's Paradise. I'm like, yo. Well, that's your kid. I, I, and he's got the dreads too, so. That's your kid. I don't know how he's going to come out. Today I made him wear, uh, 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 uh. Of that vest. What do they call that vest? Dog? The, 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 the Zulu vest. What do they call that vest? Dog? I always think of the, the name. What's the, the name? leopard print. The one with the leopard print. <laughs> <laughs> he was rocking that joint. <laughs> yeah. when, he left the cri- when he left the crib, he's like, Dad, why am I wearing this? I'm like, God, <laughs> what's rocking? You're representing. You're representing our heritage. Oh, it's Heritage Day. It's, it's Heritage cool. Day. So obviously, oh, okay. I, I'm, I, I'm Venda. So, okay. so uh, I, I had to do two options because Bianca's half Indian, half Zulu. So, we had to do two options. Mm-hmm. The Indian option they did last year. So we had to give them half the, the, the Zulu option and then the vendor option. Jordan chose the vendor option. Mikey chose the Zulu option. They didn't know that the Zulu option was all <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to do. We're not going to give you fashion and everything. We're going to give you the vest. Just not the, the vest. Driver's get, <laughs> come through. You hit like, him with this Java <laughs> pull up. I hit him with this Java <laughs> Hey, he pulled up like that. He, when he pulled up at school, he was like, Dad, why am I wearing this? He's at, he's at that age where he questions everything. Shit. Dad, why am I wearing this? Oh, my gosh. When he came back from school, he was on top of the world. He's like, yo. I everyone, killed it. Everyone was like, I, I look so cool. I look so cool. He didn't even take it off. He kept rocking it all day. Amazing. I'm like, yo. But yo, they've got a mind of their own, those kids. Yeah. Any kids coming up for you? Any I kids mean, in the pipeline? I wanted 17 kids at some point. I think I read it in like a U magazine thing. What the thing. fuck is wrong with you, man? Yeah, 17. I think I read it in a U magazine. The lady had 17 kids and it just seemed like so amazing. Yo. Because I just feel like I really do get attached to things and people. So now the baby's old. It's gone. As long as it's always a new one. Mm, 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 but mm. my dad always says, you know what my dad always says? Like even if he's like at the shop or something, paying for something, he'll say to the teller like, don't have children. <laughs> <laughs> so those words have like really rung in my head, but I definitely want to have kids. And I want to have I want to have kids with Buddha. Yeah. I mean, parents yeah. joke. Parents joke about that shit. Like I say it all the time. Like I was tr- trying to come to your birthday dinner and we we're looking for a babysitter. And and we yeah. had a babysitter before and now we just don't trust anybody. Yeah. So Lutz also we d- couldn't we d- come because she couldn't find a sitter. Yeah. And we don't, yeah. we, we don't like, uh, we had a babysitter, but our babysitter ro- robbed us. Oh. Yeah, so it was like we haven't trusted any Ooh. babysitters. Like, like things like that actually give me the heebie And heat. she rubbed us deep, bro. Deep, 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 deep. It wasn't like she wasn't stealing like uh, a chain or a bracelet or what. She, they like, she, they cleaned us out. They cleaned us out. For real? Yeah, and she was, and it was weird because she was babysitting Mike for f- three, three years? Three years? She was with Mike for three years. I think she, I, I think she got tired. She got tired of, uh, you know, wiping nah. his ass and shit. And she's like, fuck you. I'm rocking this house. But for me, things like that always freak me out because people don't realize that, like, it, you affect so many generations to come by doing that shit. Like, by like doing things to people now, mm. you don't even know how your bloodline will suffer for doing things like that. Well, that's, that's what it's like almost being black. Like, being black is... is, is is a little bit like more a generational difficult. generational curse. Yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, and it, it's it, it's like you almost get when you're black, you get cursed because of like the one percent or five percent of people that did some fucked up shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like because we're black, and when you're trying to do business, people are already painting you with a brush that you're gonna treat this money like that mm. because we saw somebody mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. on Instagram, mm-hmm. you know spend his money on whips and fuck it up and do it the corruption way. Forex. If you come through here, you probably the same type of character. Yeah. You know, we're always fighting that. So like you're saying, with that auntie who did that, you know, like she she affected all the people that actually are looking for good mm. for 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 good families to mm-hmm. take care of and be mm-hmm. part of the family mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, and and make money for their families. Mm. You know, she, she she's a, she's basically reinforcing that negative stereotype that don't hire people from this country don't hire people from that country you know it gets enforced because of people doing dumb shit yeah but like we'll get past it soon but like it's still on our brains like it's still on our brains you know sure. and, uh, and, and yeah i would i definitely would not trust anyone 
And the Especially crazy with your kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can hard buy now. like new stuff, but you can't get like a new kid. Like if something happens to your kid, something happens and to I your kid. And I don't even want a new kid. I don't even want a new kid. <laughs> the two that we have now. You done? Well, we're happy. You we're done? Happy. We're, I think we're happy. Like we were trying. And then like, uh, uh, I don't know if we were trying. Yeah, I don't know if we're trying, but we're, you know, you know. The pills would get dropped off, you know. The pills would relax on a couple of nights, you know what I'm saying? You know, the, the, the tube would come out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the tube would fall back, you know what I'm saying? Okay. You, you know, when the, I don't, what do you call those tubes? I need to ask my... Shit, I'm getting too... I'm getting, I'm, like, he's I'm exposing the all, I'm exposing all the racist secrets. Really? That tube, I mean, are you drinking this cruise or am I When you release you? that tube, that's when you know it's time. You know what I'm saying? Baby, please can I have another one? <laughs> Ricky Rick is like, woo. <laughs> so whoa, he's giving me I thought the, the tubes, I thought the tubes, I thought the tubes were yeah. starting to, you know, were yeah. starting to relax. But then when this stuff hit, I was like, ah, oh, actually, I think we're gonna be good with tubes. Yeah. You know what? I actually thought, like, you know, about being pregnant on the lockdown, that might be a good idea. Like that probably be a good idea because we're not doing anything. Yeah. Have the baby now. You know, me and Zinkley even had this conversation. Have the baby now, and then we can rock back 2021. But also, like, hey, how uh, how would you uh, uh, um, um, treat motherhood? Would you be that nice, uh, that sister type mother, or do you think you'll be like a you know a firm, stern type mother? Do you I see it yet? Know. Can you see it? I'm so in auntie mode. Like, as a mother... A- auntie mode is easy because they're yeah, just the favorites. because you can just come in and then after a few hours you can leave. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Get out um, of it. But I think as a mother, I would be super involved. Mm. Like, very mommy and me. Mm. Super mommy and me. Mm-hmm. Like, super duper mommy and me. But very family orientated because that's just how I grew up. Yeah. Lots of cousins... Yeah. Lots of playing, like genuinely, just like being involved. I hope, I hope you get there. I hope you get there, Muzi. It's been, it's it's really been a pleasure. I've known you for 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 longer than I've known most people. You've known me when I first started uh, coming into the industry. Um, you know, and I was telling Spooda I had a Gotti cam. Gotti's dropping an EP. Did you see? I didn't see that. I need to check. Gotti is game. dropping an EP. I said, Gotti, why am I not on your EP? I need to and check then I was out. telling Spooda that I had a Ricky Rick and Gotti Gambino EP in my Ford Fiesta, like all the jam, like the hey, what jams those, were uh, on there. Oh like, man, we had uh, there we were had dope Gotti Gam- on Gotti there. Gambi is like uh, 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 for anyone who's listening out there. Gotti Gambi is like. The originator, you know, in every crew, you always get the cat that comes through with the slam <laughs> and makes everything feel fresh. <laughs> Gotti Gambino was that guy, still that guy till this day. To this day, uh, and and he 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 really he really made hip hop feel cool. Yeah, he made hip hop feel cool, and uh, and uh, I'm gonna get that tape. I'm actually gonna put the link for the Gotti Gambino track that we did called Best Friend. I'm gonna put that down. In the link, but I love but, uh, that. But uh, I'm saying, it's like, so I know, I, I know didn't know Spooda then. then. It's so crazy that I didn't meet Spooda then. Yeah, because I met you when, like, even um, Madala was still but around. This was new, but that, but that was saying that was all new. Like, even yeah. even for me hanging with Madala, that was also new. Those that was all new friends. Even even with Spoo, Spoo yeah. da, meeting Spooda was the first time I met Spooda. Yeah, uh, 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 Spooda was with uh, uh, um, Nipo at the time. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you, 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 you know what I'm Do saying? You know what's so crazy? Those you crews, actually put me. Crew. I was w- out with you, and we went to the. I think we were at Latinova, uh-huh, uh-huh. and then we were in a reality show. That was like what the first one of the first times I was on TV. Like I was at Latinova with, with the reps. Rick Rick. No, it wasn't running with the reps. It was it was Liz's, It was a Josie situation. The North. The North. It was on yeah. SAPC one. It was a Josie situation. David Kabuka. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> it was like a crazy situation. South Africa did have the time where they tried <laughs> the reality <laughs> shows. They really like, did try. For real. They really tried. Now, but now they're booming. Yeah. Are you? Are, you know do, what are, I you see, are we seeing your reality show coming soon? Um, you know what? I was actually in talks to do another one with like uh, some friends, but then like uh, they closed outside, so we don't know. But uh, maybe we might. It, it might be. What happened know. to rich kids? What happened to rich kids? I can I tell you the truth? It's so wild to me. People will come up to me in, in the street, like of everything that I've done. Okay, besides the conservation Glamazon video. Yeah. People will be like. <gasps> Aren't you the girl from Rich Kids? Yeah, like, what I've happened? done so much dope shit. Like, why are you guys no, people, stuck on Rich Kids? I, I think people, you know, like, 
when I watch Moja Love <laughs> and when I watch Mzansi <laughs> Magic, <laughs> man, there's something like I find myself watching Real Housewives. <laughs> like, listen, like no offense to anybody creating content and 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 getting your hustle on and doing your job, right? But like nonsense is fucking entertaining you know My what i'm favorite. saying like because i know some uh, i know some of those people in real housewives My right favorite and 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 and, and they great like they great fucking people they great like brilliant people when you meet them here but when you watch it on tv when you watch the show you're like this is some nonsense this, <laughs> this is not even really this person Guys, but it's fucking entertaining i love it like anybody who love knows, knows i love like 90 day fiance <laughs> all the housewives even potomac exactly. i want them all exactly i want like love and hip-hop every single city exactly. i want like nothing yeah, exactly serve me absolutely nothing Exactly, and I'm gonna take it. Exactly, like, like that's my let life. me learn nothing. Let me yeah. learn. Let, let me learn no lessons. Yeah, that's what I want to watch. So yeah. I think Rich Kids was like, and I think why Rich, Rich Kids, Kids worked is that like, even though I realized that I was a presenter, I definitely threw myself into that character of like, <laughs> okay, Sengla, <laughs> what do you have? Show me, punish me. Do you know what I mean? Because they thought, oh, we're just going to come on this show and like show people how cool. Ah, ah. I said, hey, <laughs> there's no champagne at this party. You so know? you're the actual instigator. Like, you were instigating I was instig- Do you know what is so crazy about that show, though? We only actually ended up doing five episodes, four real episodes, the last one being a recap. But it was supposed to be 12 episodes, if I'm not mistaken. But real rich people are not trying to be on TV. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. like they are not trying to be on TV. They are not trying to what. And some kids well, would just luxury. sign Remember, up. Like, like some quiet. some kids would sign up, and then we get there, and the ki- the parents are serving us. No, like you guys can't shoot today, or we do the shoot. Then halfway through, we just realize, Guti, oh, there's a forex situation happening. Oh, yeah, like some some shady we shit. We gotta get out of here. So it was actually really difficult to do a whole entire season. Uh, it was really, really hard. Damn. Yeah, because that, 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 I think everyone was waiting. I think that's why people ask you. Because everyone was waiting for that sixth episode. Yeah. <laughs> everyone was waiting for the next episode. That's like, so where weird. the fuck and is this I was shit? actually looking at Showmax the other day. On Showmax. So there was a lot of kids, capping. There was too much capping going on. Way too much capping. So the Rich Kids cover on Showmax has me on the cover. But it's not even my season. I did season two of Rich Kids on Showmax this season one. So show Max, I don't know why you guys are doing that, but it's weird. <laughs> Did you see that shit with the with the BMW? Yeah, with, with the with the BMW and using Krista. But that wasn't Krista's joint. It was a type beat. What did they do? They did a type beat. <laughs> type. That's what I was thinking. I said, Cuesta, Maqua X Cuesta type beat. <laughs> BMW went straight to YouTube, type beat, and plugged that shit in. I was like, yo, yeah. that, what a fucking finesse, bruv. That's what, what they a do. finesse. But what I'm saying is that you gotta you gotta recognize. Oh, did you see strong. the Metleman? The boss zonke of flu. Don't fucking don't and Dude. Don't, don't even mention the Metlin shit. That shit's got me hot. That shit's got me hot. <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> I that thought shit's got that me hot. was crazy. Dog, you know, let me tell you something, and it's not the first one, right? Um actually Mo Fire. Mo Fire almost did the same thing, because Mo Fire did a flavor, Mo Fire Lemon. And they called it Bazonke. And uh and uh and uh you know, I, I had a conversation with Spoo about it. Okay. Um and I was like, I, I I just hit him up on the private, like, yo, you know, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Because we've actually got a relationship. Mm-hmm. Um but you know, as an artist, bro, there's like we create cool shit, right? And I I I feel like I created the term Bazonke. Right, because the, I don't remember anyone using did that term. Did you not, though? You know what I'm saying? Did you not? I, I, I definitely did. You but, did. But, you know, I'm still learning even till today that you've got to really take those small phrases, the names of your songs, mm. anything that you say on social media, on a record, or that you put on a T-shirt, you got to be able to protect yourself legally. Mm-hmm. Because... There's no real conversation. You know, I can't hit up Led Med Lemon. You know, they're going to tell me, oh, we, we just, we filed the trademark under this and that section, mm-hmm. which I didn't. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't fight with Swoo and say, yo, Swoo, you, you know, you know, yeah. you know, I can't fight with him. It, and yeah. the conversation wasn't even a fight. It was just like, yo, we could have oh, done something is. bigger. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to do something, we could have done something bigger. That was the conversation. It wasn't really a fight. 
Um, but even if I wanted to fight, the conversation is I've trademarked it under beverages, you know. So uh, um, med lem- I-, I can't fight, but as an artist, I'm still learning even till today. All that small shit you create, you got to run and go trademark that shit and make sure the business is set up because Completely. those motherfuckers in, in, in the agency rooms or the black motherfucker in the agency room is the guy that's watching what's happening in the street. And even when he tells the Med Lemon execs, that's what we have to call it. Those Afrikaans guys don't know. Those fucking British cats don't know. Uh, Glasgow Smith Klein, they don't know what Balsonka is. So I'm not even going to tweet about it or go crazy. There's billboards, there's ads on YouTube, there's everything. And people keep sending me the shit. I'm not even going to go crazy about it because, you know, I just checked the business side at the back. I'm like, damn, I didn't sort that one out for, for every you know, category, which, is, which was impossible to do because I don't have the resource. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't like... Capital. People think it's as simple as just trademarking, you know... Yeah, it's not like you just want to send an email and you can just and it's love. done. It's yeah. like the, the process is so much deeper than that. And then by the time you even get to the process, it's so expensive to try cover it, let alone just in South Africa, to even try cover all around the world. It's like it's so hard. So and that's it how just tricky. Wakes me up. It's so tricky. That's it's how so tricky. tricky and the integration. Like it it's just so gets tricky. so so crazy, and I think what is difficult is that we also, as artists, as creators, need to learn to take responsibility for our part in getting fucked over. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But I don't look at it, you know. But I, I don't look at it as a fuck over. Yeah. You know, like if a brand, if a brand takes something that we make cool, um, and 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 they use it, you know, for me, I don't look at it as getting fucked over. You know, because if I wasn't using it. You know, it probably means like I was either using it somewhere else or I didn't have a plan for it. Mm-hmm. If somebody wants to jack and jump on his tees, go ahead. I'm used to that shit. Like I've been, I've been, I've been going through that shit since since standard one. Niggas have been looking at what shoes I've been wearing <laughs> and rocking my shoes, stealing your Nig- outfits. Niggas have been stealing my outfits. Like I, 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 I'm used to that part of it, you know. But where, where it fucks you up on the business side is where you realize to actually fight that battle where you can protect yourself on all fronts completely extensively on all fronts from 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 fucking mining to beverages to music to merchandising to 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 to, to buildings to everything that's where you got to get the 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 your business right into and, and your cheese right completely and you got to have a plan for all of those yeah you know for all of those categories and and it really i was doing that already like dropping a song i'm already thinking what can i do you know to put onto tv what can I do to put onto a product? One day I might do a product like this with that, you know? Just from making the music, I'm already thinking, this song title, what is it going to do? Where can it move? Can I go to MTN? Can I go to Vodacom? Can I go to Standard Bank? Can I go to f and I'm already thinking about that. But these guys just woke me the fuck up and said, oh, damn, it's not even just about the, the brands and the campaigns. It's actually really about the products. You got to cover it so you're able to make products with all that shit. Mm. It's not just about trademarking it so you can do the ad it's really about yeah. trademarking it so you can make the product with that with that name you yeah know what I, mean? I think also it's just like mm. a, a, a lesson on the fact that you you really do have the spirit of god on the inside of you that you can create and give life to things just at at the at a word yeah like if you say it with your mouth it becomes a thing and it goes further than what you even imagined it so i think we also just need to remember that the things that we do, the work that we do, the words that we say, it's so important. Like, important enough to say, I'm made lemon. I'm made, don't you buy, like, when did you even last no, see a made lemon advert? Don't say, don't say made lemon again. <laughs> I'm not going to say made so lemon bizarre, anymore. So bizarre, man. We need to call it something else. Yeah, like the same way they call Clicks the blue store, we need to get a new and they f- and, made and, lemon. And they, they're capitalizing because they did it, that shit during the COVID time. So they're like, oh, people are really sick now. We got to, you know, we really got to come with something that resonates. But for me, like I say, you know, I'm very happy. You know, we still use the Boss Onka in so many fronts. Boss Onka gets licensed maybe twice a year. That is crazy. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're happy with what we've done with the song. And we're happy with what we've done with the, with the character that we've created. And we can do stuff with that. And, uh, but I just want to let these brands know that, you know, if they want some sauce... We can always give them some sauce. You, you know, know what I'm saying? I mean? like, Come and get this recipe. Like, yeah, you don't have to steal. Come, and I, and yeah. we're not those type of, you know, I, I think we've been in the game long enough that 
we don't need to take social media to fight with anybody or any brand about anything. But this is an open invitation to any brand that needs some source, that needs to understand what the fuck is going on in the streets, what words can we use, what terms can you use. Come to us, we'll give it to you. Yeah, and, uh, we're, we're not, trying to we're work. Not, and we're not going to charge you as much as the big agencies that you've been exactly that you pay happily, to. happily, and you you do not nitpick the invoices at all. Nah, we're not we're not going to tax you like that. We'll give it to you on the low. Just make sure you come to us and we'll give you the source. Yeah. Because, we're, we're, you know, it's easy. It's nothing for us. It's yeah. simple. But you know what I also think is that I hate that you're saying, no, we're not going to take it to social media. Like, it's so boring that as artists, we always have to, like, behave on this. But on the backside of this thing, do you know they blacklist, they talk shit about you. Oh, no, we worked with her on this campaign and we were supposed to tweet at two and she only did at 2.30 or whatever. Of course. So they do that to us. They blackball us all the time. They go into these little things and they they disrespect us and what we bring to the table. And these are the, so agen- these are the agencies. These are the, these are the agencies. These are the brands. But besides that, we need to stop saying these are the agencies, this is the brand, it's the radio, it's the channel. And these are people. And brands always and brand and, and, and people and the people at brands always try to make you feel better when when they're pitching something to you like oh we like in, in your instance not to carry on with the name in your instance they'll say oh no that's fine in your instance they say oh we spoke to we spoke to oh fuck I can't even use names <laughs> I can't use names use gonna, a name no it's gonna sound <laughs> sideways who's your friend in the industry give me someone who's your friend that they don't know is your friend let's say a rouge. Okay, I don't even want to. I don't want because I don't want to. I don't want to use this example and people think that the people are actually like that. Le, okay, let's say Zintler because uh-huh. everyone knows Zintler is great to work uh-huh. with. Um, um, not to say that Rouge is not great to work with. You see, what it's the? It's so f- crazy. You fuck. have to like. I can't say yeah. shit. <laughs> I can't say shit. I'm not free. I'm not free. Oh my god. Okay, listen. Fuck it. I have to. Okay, let me use. Yeah. Let me use Zintler for example. Let's say, let's say a brand will hit you up. And, they'll, and maybe simply decline something, mm-hmm. right? A brand will hit you up and say, Muzi, we want to work with you. Um, we tried to give this one to Zinkle, but uh, um, um, she, doesn't, she, 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 she doesn't quite represent uh, the brand. Not, not knowing that Zinkle has told you already, Yo! these people have come and spoke to me. Exactly. I, I told them no, but they'll come to mm-hmm. you and say, oh, we can't use Zinkle because, because of A, B, and C, and run, or because of this, this, and that. Mm-hmm. Not trying to pitch you guys up against each other. Yeah. They've been they've been playing that game too. Crazy. They got to they got to they, they got to stop, stop playing that game. Like when you but call me, is, don't mention like my my don't my talk rivals' name. Don't exactly. talk to me about who's not doing the exactly. deal. Exactly. Don't talk to me about anyone. They love to do that. They love to do that, and people don't even realize it. And you know what's so crazy is that um, and I I had this moment once with um Ayanda Tabete. It was because he signed contracts or whatever. I won't mention the brand name. And it worked out beautifully in her favor. But she was such a lesson for me on like the fact that God will never take your blessings and give them to somebody else. And I think a lot of the time people always try to make you feel like, hey, Rick and Rick could have done this, but now we're going to give it to you. No, it's not my thing. Stop mm-hmm. trying to give me other people's things. I didn't want it. I, like, I, I, if I don't want thing. it, I don't want it. Do you know what I mean? That, like, yeah. don't do that. So there was this deal that I was supposed to do. And this is something that I thought about since I was a kid. Like, oh my gosh, this is the deal that uh, I need to have this deal. Like every girl who becomes a presenter or whatever she wants. Yeah, you got to get this deal. Yeah, yeah. The deal came to me. Like, mm. I said, what? This is the deal. The deal just was not for me. Mm. It was not for me, but I felt so hurt. I felt so like, there's people hate me, whatever. I even Slicker was trying to be like, oh, come on, take the deal. You know, this is the deal. Well, Slicker, like, Slicker got to calm the fuck down. <laughs> his, that overworking motherfucker. That nigga, that nigga works too much. That nigga calling Dude, you five times a day, I'm telling you, telling hey, yo, I'm working with this yeah. band. Hey, 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 tell me how you feeling. That nigga works too fuck. Yo, Slicker S- needs a holiday. Slicker was trying to like be like, yo, you got to take this deal. I'm like, you. and I'm also just like, why am I not taking this deal? <laughs> like, I gotta take this deal. And Slicker I mean? will make you feel. And Slicker will make you feel like you gotta take. Like it, it was even in an interview. Might, you can I actually pull up the video. Like <laughs> he was like, you gotta take that deal. You know. <laughs> That's then, a hustler. That's a hustler. Though. you yeah. gotta do that. You gotta put on his people. So then the deal came to, because I Another was working per- with uh, the agent that it came to was also working with Paul Mudiadi. Yeah. And she was also like. 
I'm not trying to take the deal. Yeah. Like, it's not going to work for me. But we were just in a different place. Mm. Then the deal went to Ayanda. Mm. And the way it was so aligned for her, it mm. was just, it was always her deal. It worked out perfect. I mean? It, lo- it, it, so it was the way it was meant to be. Exactly. The stars aligned for that so to happen for her. I really hate that people want to use work. First of all, because we're out here working. And they want to give it to us as these opportunities and these big things and whatever. We appreciate them. They are blessings for real. But ultimately, it's work and it'll go to the person that it's meant to go to. Mm. Don't make me like big borrow and steal and stab a person in the back and undermine the game and undermine the growth of the industry. Because ultimately, that's what happens. Yeah is that when you try to cut corners with people, when you try to be conniving and you try to whatever, you undermine the growth of the game. And ultimately, God's will is what will be done. Ultimately. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. don't like steal from people and undermine people and try to make it seem like... uh, 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 It always catches up. It always catches up. Always. It always always catches up. Always. But, But like I was saying... Just to close it off, that's why this is so dope. And we're going to get the homie in the studio, a.k.a. in this uh, uh, um, in this podcast soon. But this is so dope because everyone has a vision of a.k.a. As being a selfish, uh, uh, selfish megalomaniac, you know. <laughs> like, like he wants all the shine. Like he's got to have all the shine. And um, for this to happen, while well, obviously a.k.a. Is, is doing the amazing things that he's doing with, with Cruz, for them to be like, shit, it's time mm-hmm. to expand, and 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 we gotta we got we, we gotta reach out to our fam because you guys are friends. You guys have been working for, together, and you've been friends for a very long time. Yeah. For him to come down, not even down, but for him to reach down a little bit and say, my homie, she about to make this shit pop. Let's do it too. It's fine. I approve. I stamp this shit. Let's operate. Yeah. That, you don't get that anymore. Yeah. Do you not don't get that anymore. So when people talk about. That nigga being a megalomaniac or a selfish brew, you can't be a selfish brew and have Muzi on the on the Manhattan <laughs> Blossom. I don't know because yeah. I've I, like I've been in conversations where again the brand tells you where someone who you think is your friend is telling the brand not to sponsor your event. Mm-hmm. Is telling the brand not to mm-hmm. put you on the brand here and there. You know what I'm saying? I've been in those situations and it's like what the fuck. Is that how it's meant to be? It's not actually meant to be that way. It's like, if I'm rocking Nikes, Nike better give my whole fucking team Nikes. Right? If I'm rocking Pumas, if Pumas not giving my whole team, if I, don't, if I, if I can't call Puma and say, Puma, go send, you know what I'm saying, uh, send uh, t- 20 pairs to Uncle Vinny's house. You know, or Vinny does that shit for me, actually. Matter of fact, that's how it's meant to be. That's my boy. Like, <laughs> actually, Vin, Vinny's, the, my boy. Vinny's the Puma, Puma ambassador. He gets them to send me shit. You get, what, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how it's meant. That's how it's meant to be. It's not meant to be like, this is only for me. Mm-hmm. I'm the one in the crew that has to have the de- the deal. You know, people have to know me as the guy who has the cruise vodka. I'm the only person. You gotta be able to spread the love. So what you guys are doing with this, I know that you are also gonna reach down again and bring some of your homies with you straight to the top and i can't wait to see what you guys are going to be doing with this yeah you know because there's too much there's too much of don't pay that nigga don't give that nigga a check especially with cotton fest right now we're just talking behind behind the scenes my fight for the next cotton fest is not really about getting enough money to put the event on it's about getting enough money to pay Mm -hmm. everybody that's at that show correctly and according to how much they want to get paid that's my next mission but that fight is not a fight that I'm going to have with my fellow artists and the guys like you who've come through and helped me at every show. These are favors. These are favors. These are favors and, and, and God's favors that people bless upon you and say, you're trying to do something, I'm going to come through and help you out. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and they, they take time out of their day, t- time out of you know, their schedules to pull up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like the next mission now is to try and make sure we can get people to eat. We got to get people to eat. That's the next mission. I don't give a fuck about nothing else. I don't care about being number one. I don't care about being your favorite artist. I don't care about, you know, being on some fucking iTunes charts or some cat bullshit. I don't care about none of that shit. What I care about right now is making sure everybody is able to 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 to, to open the situation that we've built. Cause hip hop especially is a new thing, you know, and we gotta take care of it and we gotta take care of each other. 
and, and bless each other's down, you know, and say, yo, she's good for the work. Go mm-hmm. ahead, go do it. You know, I got this, uh, oh, this shit, I can't even mention this shit. You get me? I get where you're at. And my thing is like, dog, if it was the That's situation the for point. me, if it was the situation for me, I'll be right there with you. Exactly. I'll be supporting it with you. When it comes out, I'm going to support it with you. Exactly. You know, I've got my own deal with my own brand. But I'm still going to support. I'm going to support your shit. Yeah. Because that's what we're meant to be doing. Completely. It's, n- it's not about fuck this, fuck that. It's not about who's got the better deal, who's got the better. It's not about that. It's about how we're able to make this thing rotate. And ultimately, we have to remember that, like, we are so strong when we come together. The influence that other people bring. Because there are people who are like, ah, Muslim's irritating. Ugh, but Ricky says she's cool. Okay, let me hear what she has to say. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? There's other people who are I like, woo, error one. watchers are too like, yo, they just mm. too DJ Zinkle and too far. Like, but there's a kid on the street who's like, what? She's hitting the double baby Cairo with yeah, the she's got it. more watch. Like, that's cool. I'm trying to get involved. Do you know what I mean? And that's the power and the influence that we bring to each other's hustle. So it is so important that we not only lend like, for me, I'm very big on showing up for people. I'm not the best at it. I'm horrible with my phone. You're pretty good. But trust You're pretty me, good at it. if you need me, I'm going to show up You're there. on time, look good, smelling good, and I'm going to have a bottle of cruise with me. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this has been another episode of Lab Live. I want to say thank you, Muzi, for coming through. You, you are truly a queen. You are truly a blessing to the game, truly a blessing to the industry. And a, a, a great example Thank that you. whatever you do, you got to keep hustling at it. Mm-hmm. You got to keep working at it. You got to keep practicing. You got to keep pushing. And uh, your success is not by any favor. Your success is not by any luck. It's because you've worked hard mm-hmm. and you're, you're focused. Yeah. You're focused and, um, and your spirit is aligned. Your spirit is aligned. And... Uh, we got to say congratulations. Do you know alignment everything. is my word? Did you know that? Did I tell you that? Alignment. Don't get me into alignment. I'm That's trying to sell. Uh, dog, I'm, I, I got to sell this Porsche, dog. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, thought I, I thought I was on one. Yo, wait, wait. <laughs> don't, when, you drive, when, you, when, you drive the, when you drive these cars, these foreign cars, don't ever mention the word alignment. 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 Is, and do you know what is so crazy? <laughs> that, that word makes me dizzy. Let me it makes tell me you think, something. Oh, my bank account is about to go. So. What is so wild is that <laughs> So I, my church does this like online things because obviously COVID or whatever. So we, they, we hosted an alignment conference because shit has been getting so crazy that we just need to realign. And every example that they used was so practical. And that's why I love my church so much. They're so practical. They literally showed us a video about your car's alignment and what happens when your car is not aligned, your steering wheel, your tires get more tired. Like, it actually costs more money, like you crying right now. It costs you more to not be aligned in your life. Like, you have to align with your purpose. Otherwise, even though, yes, life is not easy. You will have God's grace or whatever. But it should not cost you, like, it should not be heavy to be you. If, if being you feels heavy, if a situation that you're in feels like, uh uh-uh, no, I have to go buy a new shoe because this shoe is uh, uh, alignment. It'll cost you money. It'll cost you energy. It'll cost you so much to be unaligned. You will have to keep repairing things. New tire, new steering wheel, new this, new that, new that. Uh, uh-uh. Align. It's very, very important. Lab life. <laughs>